Shooter, fired up, fired out of the red corner, waiting at 61.6. He's 32, stunts 5 9. He fights out of four corners and hails from Liverpool, Jake Riley. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, waiting at 61.4. He's 19, stands at 6 tall. He fights out of one MMA and next generation and hails from Southwood, Dylan Well, ladies and gentlemen, it rolls on here. Another bantamweight amateur contest. Jay Riley fighting out of the red corner in the white shorts trimmed with black, representing four corners, giving up a great deal of height and reach to the lean Dylan McGee representing one MMA. The gray armor shorts, six foot one and 135 pounds. He's gonna have some range. And Jay Ooh. Riley's gonna have to figure out how to get inside. There's a nice right hand landed there. Oh, and Riley bullies him down it. By McGee. Oh, drops down for a guillotine. I don't think he's got that though. No, I think he's gonna be able to pop that head out. He's trying to make that readjustment, stay tight. But he could end up flat in his back with the one MMA prospect. So hard to make those uh, grip readjustments with these big MMA gloves on. There's certainly not a finish there. Trying to use those butterflies to elevate his opponent, but changes it to the... Oh, that looks tight. That does look tight there now. He's managed to definitely get some kind of a grip adjustment under that because it looks under the chin from here. It's trying to change that body position. Oh, bit of a grimace on the face from McGee. He grimaces him. He looks fairly calm under there. Ooh. Riley's going to have to be careful because if he doesn't pull this off, he's now got the body lock he's on. He's going to burn those arms out. Oh, he's let go. Of yeah, grip. let go with one. That's risky. I mean, keeps letting go of it. Yeah, I mean, it is. It looks it like looked, it's in deep. It looks tight, but no. Oh, he's oh. trying to readjust that grip again. Got to be careful not to burn those arms out, though. This is a a long, long time to be squeezing that lactic acid. It'll start to build up. Mm. McGee doing a good job of staying calm and staying patient. Trying the best he can to try and keep his spine straight. So there's a bit less compression on the choke. I mean, some good work from Riley to keep readjusting and yeah, I mean, as I said, keep before. keep that pressure on him. But you just got to think Very if difficult. if he pops his head out in the next few seconds, he's gonna have plenty of time to work from top position. Oh, that looks tight again. I don't think he's gonna be able to pop his head out once you can't see the hairline. It's very hard to pop your head out. It's his shoulders right over the back of the uh, of the head of McGee. And again, the majority of this fight so far has been one man on top, one man on bottom, but the man on bottom is the man threatening. Yep. I mean, McGee. Yeah, I mean, he spent most he, of this round trapped in the guillotine. Absolutely, but he spent most of the time trapped in the guillotine, but he hasn't succumbed to the guillotine. Mm. And that is a long time to be squeezing. He is a powerfully put together bantamweight, is Jay Riley, but that's a lot of time to be squeezing. So if you're Pietro Mendo over there in the one MMA's corner with Dylan Mickey, what are you telling him? Well, I think it's really hard to gauge kind of where you're at because you spent so much time in that guillotine outside of, you know, escaping the guillotine advice. I'm not too sure what you can say. No, because it's not like he had taught. It's not like yeah. you were underneath. It's not like you got rocked. It's not like you were being outclassed on your feet. On the feet, it looked maybe like McGee had the slight advantage, but as we say, most of the fight was spent on the ground, so hard to really say before they ever got to settle into it. And I wonder now if Jay Riley's going, all right, I think I have a clue how this one's going to go. Mm. 
We'll see if Dylan McGee can use some of that reach and that range in this, this round, or is Jay Riley going to initiate that clinch and takedown? Oh, swinging wild is Riley. Yeah, those straight shots got th are getting oh, through, but they're big, but they're wild. Yeah. You're really just playing with fire. But he uses those fireworks to close in the distance. You know, maybe he oh, watched. gets reversed. Maybe he watched our last fight, and mm -hmm. you know, Stevanov needed to needed to swing and to get in close, and he's decided, yeah, I was going to swing and get in close, but now. That's the second time McGee's been able to reverse the position. Mode. Absolutely. The takedown. Although, in, again, in the first round, McGee was in top. Not. But defending that choke throughout here. He's got the legs wrapped up. Yep. Can start to chip away at his opponent. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a choice that he's got to make here between whether he wants to keep those legs wrapped or try and slide into mount. It looks like he's going to choose yeah, to slide into mount. Yeah, he's choosing to... And a good little shrug, push off at the hip to try to get that quarter guard. But it's, it is just a quarter guard. Just. Some people prefer quarter, yeah. quarter guard for their ground and pound. I mean, certainly not a bad position to try and mount your offense from. McGee now looking maybe to take that back. Gonna be, yeah, no, we're going to get now. Now we could get a round of hand fighting the other way round. Jay Riley gonna have to defend from this position. Dylan McGee now chipping away. Yeah. Good hand fight there by McGee. Not quite as slick as the one we saw from Khan earlier, but still very nice. Oh, oh. palm to palm. Oh, oh that looks tight. Gonna try, to gonna try and he needs to get the hat. Yeah, it's uh, not Riley quite a under job of peeling off that top hand. Yeah, it wasn't quite under the chin. He could have crushed the jaw a little bit. But you saw him look for the short grip. There he is trying again, attacking that rear naked. He's got the hand behind the head now, rather than on top of the head. That's the nice and tight. Head, it's easy to peel. But good. Yeah. Again, doing everything right, pulling the top hand. Again. Not, not quitting in the moment, not looking for a way out. Riley's still very much trying to win this fight. And again, he's got that chin tucked. Mm. It doesn't look under it yet, so it'd be more of a face crush. But now looking to try and turn into that tr body triangle. Oh, well, this is where being the up on top position. position. Yeah. yeah. It's easier for you to get your hips to the mat. And now we'll let's see if, oh. oh. End of the round. So unlucky by Riley. The moment he gets dominant position, end it around. Well, you know, that's... Ooh. I think we're going to see a very aggressive Riley. I, coming I, into he the has to be. He absolutely has to be. He can get into dominant positions, but he's got to work quicker to get there. And I, I wouldn't even necessarily be too confident in going for the takedown because the last two times he's gone for the takedown, he's had the position reversed on him. Yep. And he's ended up on bottom for the majority of the round. So I think his corner might be telling him, hey, let's keep this on yeah, the feet yeah. and let's just let's go for broke. This guy's a lot younger than you. He's got maybe less experience. Let's try and, you know, freak him out a little bit with some aggression. Wow. Not much time left for speculation. It's a Hail Mary. Seconds are cleared, third and final round in this amateur bantamweight contest. Dylan McGee, the one MMA fighter in the gray armor shorts, the blue corner. Jay Riley representing four corners and the white shorts with black trim. Opens it up with a, a leg kick. And the taller man ducks underneath the shot and looks for the single and works to try and Place his opponents back to the mat. Almost there. Very smart by McGee there. Very smart. I think he probably, him and his team probably knew that Riley was going to be throwing big on the feet. So they were just like, nah, we've had so much control in the last two rounds on top. Let's take it to where we know we're good. Riley just trying to get that little bit of distance to try and stand, but McGee stays sticky to him. 
Looking to try and move around to the back again. But he's going to get right. dumped. Now, this is an interesting position to be caught up in here. Hard to tell who's going to come out on top in this scramble. Well, right now, Jay Riley can oh, I think it's land be, yeah. some shots from there. It's be Jay Riley. I mean, it's an awkward position. He's got his leg in there. It's almost like... Um, Oh, nice steps fan. over. Oh, here we go. This is going to be the anaconda now. Does is he, he look for, for it like it? a guillotine? He sat for it like a guillotine. We've seen this earlier tonight. Got to keep him in his guard. Still a little bit of room for Dylan McGee to work in. He pops that head out. Now Dylan McGee, top position again. I am curious as to why we've seen fighters tending once they get that almost anaconda-esque position sitting back for the guillotine rather than rolling for the classic a anaconda. touch of inexperience perhaps I mean, maybe he felt that the grip maybe, was on yeah, but. trying to scramble now is jay riley dylan mcgee riding S staying heavy inside that half guard i just feel like a lot of what makes that that grip work is kind of taken away when you then wrap your legs around your opponent, but who are we to say? I'm not the one climbing in the cage, so. No, me neither. Again, Dylan McGee controlling oh, on top sweep. and a lovely sweep. I was oh. just saying he was yeah. controlling on top, but Jay Riley's like, nah, my turn. See now here, there we go. I'd like to see him maybe go for the anaconda position. But, ah, no, good readjustment from Oh, inverted triangle. Okay, yeah. Not a lot of not time a, left, though. Not a lot of time left. He doesn't have it in the ideal spot. Last 10, 10 seconds, seconds left. He just needs just to squeeze. squeeze but just squeeze away. There's still the a little bit of space. Well, competitive three rounds. Judge is going to have to go back to work for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, after three hardcore rounds, we want to do this scorecard. We have a split decision in favor of your winner. In the red corner, Jim Riley. Please show your appreciation to Dylan.